Welcome to Lady in the Red Bandana. I am Mish and I'm here today with Joe, who is a professional guitarist, a songwriter and a tutor. So hello, Joe. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Yeah, excellent. Really, really good. Cool. Right. What I'm going to do is if you just want to introduce yourself to all the viewers and the listeners, that would be great. Uh, hey, guys, uh, I'm Joe. I'm a professional musician. Uh, I'm based down in London. Um, yeah, so I've um, I, I've been playing guitar since I was 13. Um, I started off playing in bands uh, when, when I'm probably about a year later, I think. And then when I was 19, I decided to um, start playing for a living, basically. If you let us know a little bit about why you got into music, why you wanted to get into music. So normally with these things, people get into, I guess, with music and sport and that sort of thing, they get into when they're quite young and then they want to pursue it professionally. So tell us about a little bit when you were younger and how you got into it. Uh, so I started playing guitar when I was 13. Um, I saw, I was around my friend's house actually, and I saw him playing guitar. And I just remember it was like the coolest thing. Um, and it was completely alien to me. So um, yeah, got some guitar lessons at school, um, probably about a year, it was kind of in my first band. Uh, didn't really have like any technique or anything. It was just mainly just having fun and writing songs. Um, I had a bit of a rough time at school, so I was kind of, I never really fit in. So for me, music was just a way to like escape. And um, yeah, I just thought, I just thought it was great. I, I'm, yeah, I really like creating things. And um, yeah, so guitar was kind of a bit of an outlet for that really. So, um, so yeah, probably fast forward to I was about 16, so like being in bands at school, um, I probably did like, well, probably about five, five EPs between the ages of sort of, 13 to like 19 14 to 19 sorry so it's fast forwarding a bit but um uh yes yeah, so when i was 16 i enrolled in college in leicester to do music technology um because i didn't know what i wanted to do i was just like, i just want to do something in music so um I, I went there for a year and i realized it probably wasn't for me so i switched did performing and then um, i met a really great mentor there um who'd sort of spent 20 years in london he came back to leicester to teach um so yeah, he gave me some really great advice. And then I sort of made the decision, I think probably about 18, 19 to, to do it professionally. Um, and then that's kind of when I realized that if I wanted to make a career, I had to go away and study and probably move away from my hometown. So because I love like uh, growing up uh, in the Midlands and all my friends were there, it was kind of for, for long term, it's kind of what I had to do. So um, yeah, that's kind of it really. So you obviously had lots of musical experiences. So you said you had a great tutor, uh, what other experiences musically led you to where you are now? Um, probably, well, I was massively into bands like Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, uh, bands like Blink-182, Sum 41, probably my favourite bands. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think listen to those. Um, and it, the radio was always on in my house. I, I've not got any family members that are musicians, but there's music was always on. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of, it always gave me like a, a bit of a buzz, especially performing live and recording. And like I said, being like creative and writing songs was always quite a, a really cool outlet for me. So, um, yeah, and I remember going to like concerts and stuff, like seeing bands like The Darkness and, um, who else did I see? Yeah, quite quite a few like big acts it was really cool. And that kind of like, all, all I knew, well, please, sorry, when I used to go to concerts, I'd get really annoyed because I wished I was up there. So I, I, I find it really hard to enjoy the concert. Um, see Nickelback, I know everyone hates them, but I think they're great and live. I don't amazing. hate them. I like <laughs> Nickelback. You're okay. I like them. It's fun. <laughs> no, um, that's really cool. I mean, it's it's really hard, isn't it? So if you are like a young person and you're trying to fit in at school, everyone's always trying to fit in at school as well, aren't they? And then you're into sort of alternative back then for me that was alternative back then I know it's not so much now it's more a bit popular now isn't it so when you're into that alternative music it is hard to fit in sometimes and I think that the fact that that just spurred you on when you were going to concerts and it made you want to be on the stage that's really cool I like that so obviously with any sort of journey any industry I mean music's a massive one music's are such a huge huge industry to get into so there's always going to be really good parts of it and then there's always going to be bits where you're like oh it, it must take so much effort and so much time and so much emotion to to get through those stages so if anybody that let's say somebody wants to get into it a young person or somebody's trying to change their career what 
like high points have you had in your career so far that you would like to tell them to say yeah definitely do it and this is why yeah so um i'd say a lot of it's kind of how you're wired personality wise so high points for me was well i, I really struggle um, I'm a bit of a rebel at heart, so I really struggle working for people. I've, I've worked in bars and restaurants and stuff growing up, and I just knew that I wouldn't be able to do any job working for someone. So for, for music especially, you're kind of, you're living in a bit of a different world to everyone else, is the best way I can describe it. So um, your hours are quite different. You're in different places a lot of the time. Um, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of opposite hours to a lot of people, um, but then... Yeah, I do. The high points for me, I'd say, I was really lucky when I was 22. I got to support uh, One Direction on their first tour, uh, playing for one of my friends. That was great, um, and that kind of changed my life because all the stuff I got after that, the open, open doors, um, uh, which was brilliant. Um, the other weird thing, um, a good friend of mine who I grew up with, uh, Josh Devine, he was the actual drummer for them at the time, and it was really weird because we kind of played together, sort of growing up at various points and then we were both on this tour together and it was yeah, really cool and that, that was that was just amazing playing massive arenas thousands of people every night and that was like you know it's what people dream of I was re really lucky just to sort of have like a taste of that um and it was it was great um and then yeah I've been able to like make a living um me and my partner in the process of buying a house at the moment so like you can have them people say oh yeah there's no money in music there is and you can make a living and you can get a house and you can do all the normal stuff it's just it's it's a lot harder and it takes a bit more time um so and it can be really fun um, it, and obviously there's low points as well um yeah like i mean for me really like i i love recording and writing songs um so that's like just just be able to do that as part of you know it's not 24 7 obviously but to be able to do that alongside because it's kind of related to the job i'm doing um is, is really fun as well so um but yeah, they say if you can make like something, you're, anything you're passionate about, not just music, you know, whatever it is, if you can make some sort of career or even just a semi-professional career out of it, like I think I think you're really lucky, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it is it is tough. You're 22, did you say, when you got when you were playing with One Direction? But yeah, well, we supported them on their supported first them. tour. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah we, were like, we were we were opening for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th I mean, that's really cool. I mean, so if somebody wanted to do that, what was the process in doing that? How did you get to that point? Because obviously there is a process. Definitely. So it's all about contacts as well as being like a networking. I know they say, oh, yeah, so any industry is all about contacts and networking. But I think with music, it's um, it, it really is about that. And um, I, when I was studying at college, the guy, one of my friends who, who, who emailed me about the, do you want to do this tour? I was like, yeah, great. It was someone I'd met when I was um, 18. You know, this is four years later. And like he was um, still based in Leicester. Um, and I was down down in Surrey. So like, and we not really spoke for Know, year, like years since since I'd, I'd um, moved down here so and it was just uh yeah just obviously I need a guitarist to do a tour and that, that was it it was just potluck at the time um but with like playing professionally like, and what you don't see is you see people on you know tv or big tours or gigs and stuff is that that's probably five percent of the time they're up there playing there's the other 95 percent which you don't see so you know you're hanging out with people um you know you could be tired a lot of the time you do a lot of traveling um, and sometimes some of the people that are really successful, they're not always like the best musicians. Um, you know, uh, the amount of tons of people I know that have never sort of, you know, not made it, but they've never, they've only got to a certain point just because they've got, and it sounds awful to say, but they've got some sort of personality flaw that holds them back. And, you know, we, we've all, we've all got flaws. Um, but when you sort of on, on a tour with someone or, or spend a lot of time with people, I think any industry, you know, people get on your nerves. So yeah, having like some, it's like, well, professionalism they call it i think just being a, being a nice person uh, don't be annoying or if you know you are annoying try not to be um yeah there's there's, there's more i could say but that's probably my sort of take on it really this is just um five percent ten percent of it is actually playing the music and then the rest is just people skills yeah absolutely so with gathered together with the high points you mentioned a little bit about there's obviously low points with this as well now I see I see music from the outside because I've never been part of a, a band or anything like that. I've seen, I've gone to concerts and I love it and that sort of thing. But obviously there is a low point. There's, there gets low points in these situations. What are yours and what would you, how would you, how did you, should I say, push through them? Definitely. I think um, 
hardest point for me was probably going from studying music to actually making a living out of it. Um, and I think just for any, any industry is that it really comes down to how badly you want it. And if you really, really want something, you'll, you know, you push through those. And it's not like, I'd say 5%, 10% of, of talent is kind of whatever industry you're in is you need, you need something or some interest, some natural ability. The rest of it's just, you know, uh, determination and hard work. And I think that the key word is persistence. I think no one that's been successful is, you know, they've, they've had to like keep going. It's usually when something knocks you back or, you know, I've made some silly mistakes when I was really young. Um, and the most important thing is you make, we all make mistakes and some are big, some are small, but the most important thing is you learn from them and say, look, I've really messed up here. I won't do that again. Um, and then try and try and move on for that. Um, Cause I think we're always learning. I, I find it interesting because I've never been in that situation before. Uh, music is something that I listen to. I'm on, I'm definitely an outsider. I'm definitely audience uh, side of those things. So, uh, so let's bring it back a bit to what I specialize in. So looking after people, obviously I think music is looking after people as well. Of course it is. People find so much love out of listening to music and comfort out of listening to music. So whilst you're a musician whilst you're you're a professional guitarist you're a tutor as well you obviously have to look after yourself what sort of things do you do to look after yourself what sort of self-care routine do you have i think the number one and two your place a joint number one is um make sure you get enough sleep or if you don't have a nap um and then number two is uh, exercise um I try to go out, run probably two, if I can, the web's good two or three times a week. I thought that hope it just improves like your, your general mood and well-being. Um, so I'd recommend just doing that. You know, even if you're not doing it for fitness, just for your mental health, especially during these times, it really helps. Um, something I've been doing recently is um, I'll go for, try and go for a 20 minute walk a day, even if I've been out for a run and I'll leave my phone at home. Um, especially with social media, it's so easy to get addicted to it now. So yeah, I just turn my phone off, leave it in a drawer, go out for like a 20 minute walk and come home. And it's, yeah, it's really good just to kind of disconnect and just be in the present. Um, and it helps me kind of think and yeah, it's just like I've just had a little bit of a break from the social media or phone. Um, especially I think for any self-employed person, if you've got, especially with iPhone now, if you've got emails on there and messages, it's so addicting just to keep checking them all the time. Um, Whereas if they're like, you know, you're out for a walk, if, if it's really urgent, if someone's tried to ring you, they'll either leave you a voicemail or email you and it'll be there when you get back. You've obviously highlighted the importance of stepping away from social media just to disconnect, which I think is really important for any industry, whether you're a music, whether you're a beauty like myself, it is so important to not, we obviously use it for connecting with people, which is communication is like key during these times. And I think that's really good and really important. But you can also go down that slippery slope of, like you say, a, a being addicted to it, comparing yourself so much to ev what everyone else is doing. But I was talking to somebody the other day and it's about, I think with social media is it's using it for motivation rather than anything else. So motivating yourself. So if you post a photo of yourself or post a video of yourself, it's motivating you to carry on going and we can do this and we're all in it together and all the rest of it. So um, with obviously sleep and exercise, which is great. Do you do anything else? Is there anything else that you would like to do when we're out of this situation that we're all in that you would, uh, that you're going to carry on rather than just work, work, work all the time? Well, I find it really difficult to switch off. I think a lot of self-employed or semi-employed people or people that run companies probably find the same thing. So. Um, I tend to watch a lot of YouTube podcasts. I probably watch more YouTube than um, TV, to be honest. Um, and then I try and do quite a lot of reading as well. Um, I'm quite nosy, so I like to know, instead of like checking everyone's Facebook profile, I'll be um, reading something on Google or reading some articles or wh whatever it is. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a technology nerd. I don't really talk about that because it just bores people, but that's pretty much, if I'm not sort of working, I'm just reading up about stuff like that. I, just, I find like the future really fascinating especially what we're going through now, this whole thing's just accelerated innovation so much, so much further, five years forward, I think, probably for some, for some industries. So, um, yeah, I'm probably going to just try and keep, make, that helps me relax and zone out from what I'm working on and what I'm doing, really. So I think it's really important to have, whatever job you do, have something else, just, just nothing to do with it. Whatever subject it is, 
um, just so you've got and, it's, and like you know be able to switch off really I think it's really important. How have you had to adapt what you do now to what is going on in the world obviously you can't go on tour or do anything or perform live and I mean weddings are a complete no-no and all that sort of thing so how how have you coped to begin with and then how have you adapted to it? So most, most of my income I say two thirds has probably been performing in, in, in function bands. So as I've got a bit older now, my main sort of thing is is weddings and corporate. And so that's like weekend stuff, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, whatever. Um, and then the rest of the time, I, I, I teach guitar. That's probably about a third of my time. So um, obviously, all gigs, all weddings, everything's been off, uh, which has been a nightmare. Um, I mean, luckily, I've had my teaching. I've had enough to uh, just about get by. And then we've had, obviously, the, the grants and the government, which has been a lifesaver. Um, I mean, in terms of like adapting, pretty much everyone's been online via Zoom, um, and I never—I know people have done online lessons and online classes, but it's basically just forced myself and all my clients into uh, going online. Whereas before, they're like, "Oh no, no, we, we don't want to try that." Whereas everyone, everyone's been forced to try it. So I think um, moving forward, it's kind of going to be um, like a bit of a hybrid, probably like a lot of office jobs as well. They might do one or two days a week in the office, and then the rest will be at home just because they've got a bit of a a work-life balance so um yeah I think um well I know put it this way I've been really lucky that I've been able to survive through this I know quite a few of my friends and musicians well a lot of musicians actually who just perform like they've had it so so bad they've had to get other jobs and you know just to get head keep heading above water really so like working for Amazon or you know working on building sites quite a few guys have done um so yeah it's been it's been really tough like for some so I consider myself really lucky um because I've had something else and I, I, I never intended it to be like a digital online job I suppose but it's just worked out that way so um yeah so I think moving forward it'll probably be a hybrid of the two working still doing face-to-face -face, also doing online what do you prefer um well put it this way working online I have a lot more time which I do prefer um but then for certain students it's it can be really tough doing online um because of like playing in time you've like latency issues all this sort of stuff uh, and then there's some students have come on loads of like they're playing as we uh, during the whole lockdown because they've been at home all the time so i think i do miss um uh, meeting people face to face and, and chatting and that's quite nice because obviously zoom you know hi how are you blah 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 and then you crack on whereas when you face to face it's a little bit um i think not anyone really just human interaction just chatting to people is everyone be really nice to have at least some of that i think it's really important my three uh, personal care tips would be um, get enough sleep um, and if you don't try and catch up uh, number two exercise regularly it really helps mental health and three try and you know have a bit of a social media detox or you know maybe one day a week like a Sunday you know you just turn your phone off for the day and go out and leave it at home that I think I think that'd be my main three things really We have been the lady in the red bandana and we want you to be empowered to believe in yourself.